All right, we are live. Uh, welcome back. I have a special guest with me. Um, I was trying to figure out what to do with this in between time before we get started. And, uh, you know, while we're waiting for everybody to sign in, as we're waiting for people to find us and, and get notified that we're on, um, uh, I got plenty of suggestions of different things that I could do to fill this time. Uh, I don't want to do anything important. I don't want to make announcements, you know, because I don't want people to miss those things. Uh, so instead, uh, a couple suggestions for that Grayson could do a countdown, uh, but he's still working on counting. So that option was out. Some other suggestions were that I could tell jokes, really, really awful, terrible jokes. Um, uh, just not like awful in like the, the their unclean kind of sense, but just, just jokes that are so not funny that they're funny. Uh, but instead, I'm going to combine those two suggestions. And Grayson's going to tell you some jokes. Okay, so look right here and make sure you talk loud because the little microphone is right there and right there. So you want people to hear your jokes, okay? Yeah. Okay, so say your first joke. Do you have any? What does, why do strings never win? Okay, why do strings never win? A good question. Why, why, Grayson? Why do strings never win? They can only tie. Because they can only tie. Yeah, not win. Yeah, not win. That was good. Do you have any more jokes? What does the boat go when you win? Go to the dock. <laughs> what does the boat do when it gets sick? Yeah. It goes to the dock? Yeah. Yeah? That yeah. was a good one. Well, what's that silly? That is silly. Do you have any other jokes? All right, let me let me explain that to them. Let me make sure that they can hear you. So what does what did one volcano say to the other volcano? What do they say? I love you. I love you. <laughs> you have any other jokes? That was funny. That was a nice joke. You have any? Why do doctors so calm? Why are they so calm? Why are doctors so calm? Yeah. I don't know. Why? Because I don't know. <laughs> because you don't know? Yeah. You don't know that one. He's working on it. All right. Do you have any other jokes? Hmm? Uh, why are you popsicles? Drink on the sink. Why do popsicles drink on the sink? Yeah. I don't know. Why do popsicles drink on the sink? They don't. They don't? Yeah. yeah. You're just making up jokes now, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Do you have any other jokes that you know? Why do frogs jump down from high things? Why do frogs jump down from high things? Yeah. I don't know. Is that a joke or a question? A Wally question. <laughs> a question. Well, yeah, that question is for Wally. That question is for Wally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wally is a, a decoration. He doesn't. He doesn't talk. Well, you did a great job. Say, see you guys next time. Yeah. You guys next time. Okay. You go with mommy. Thank you. You guys go enjoy. You're He's gonna. He's earned himself a popsicle. So, and my lovely assistant. Yeah. So, um, that's Grayson. Uh, he's my kid. He's fun. He's sweet. He tells jokes. Most of those I did not. I didn't tell him any of those jokes. I think he learned them all from eating popsicles, and you know, reading the jokes on the popsicle sticks. So, he may have a future in comedy. Who knows? Um, but anyway, I think that's plenty of time. I think. Most of you, uh, whoever's going to be here is here. So thank you so much for tuning in to our, uh, welcome back to our live devotion time. I'm happy to be checking in with you guys here. Uh, it was fun uh, to see you guys again. Welcome back. Um, a couple quick announcements for us. Um, again, I'm not going to hammer on these points, but look, add us on Amazon Smile. 
Um, if you shop on Amazon, instead of going there, go to uh, smile.amazon.com. It looks exactly the same. You sign in the same. The difference is that we get half of a percent of your purchase. Um, Amazon donates to us. So if you spend a uh, dollar, we would get uh, a half of a cent. It's, it's 0.05%. Uh, so uh, if you spent a uh, hundred dollars, we would get a one dollar, uh, or excuse me, we would get 50 cents if you spent a hundred bucks. So it seems like it's kind of small, uh, but when you think of how many people shop on Amazon and how quick it is, to, how easy it is, and how quickly you can spend a hundred dollars. Um, we get money from stuff that you guys are already doing. So it adds up pretty quick and it's a benefit to us. Um, also, the same thing is true with Kroger Rewards. They have Kroger Community Rewards. Uh, you can attach us to your Kroger Rewards card. And so anytime you make purchases at the store or online with your uh, Kroger uh, card, your ID, um, we get a donation. I'm not exactly sure what the specific number is for that. And that process is a little more difficult um, and you, uh, I was, uh, didn't realize this, but you have to, to resubmit or uh, uh, re-sign up your card uh, every year. I think it resets in August or something. So um, you can add us to the Kroger Community Rewards. We are a real community organization here at our local store here in Princeton. Um, and so you can add us there. The instructions for how to do that have been posted on our Facebook page. Um, you may have to scroll down through some of our posts. I think it was from a week or two ago, uh, but it's there. Um, and for the next two weeks, starting on Monday, uh, on Monday, rural, I, I can never say rural king. I don't, I have a problem with the, with that word. It's the, it's the R-U's, too many, uh, it's the R-U-R, just really messes me up. But, but rural king uh, is doing something called church week, uh, and it's actually two weeks. Um, but we are, uh, you can select us uh, when you do a purchase at Rural King, and we receive 10% of your purchases. They donate to us. They, whatever you spend, they give us 10% of your total receipt. And, and again, that's, that runs two weeks uh, starting Monday, which is August 2nd. And I think it goes all the way to the 15th, August 2nd to August 15th. So again, those are great ways to, to support us without actually handing us any of your own money. Other companies do it for you. Um, again, though, if you would like to make a direct donation to us, you can do that on our website. Uh, we've changed our online giving. You can actually set up recurring or uh, payments now. Um, and so there, if you have tried to do online giving through our website before, it was a little bit weird, uh, but we have switched to a new company, a new platform. So uh, you can go to landmarkfcog.org and you can just click the giving button on the top right uh, and it will take you to our new place. You'll create an account there and it will remember your information if you want it to. I know that some of you, some of you guys gave online earlier, and and you had some issues, and you had to always type in your stuff over and over again, um, and this doesn't. Um, also, you can just donate here on Facebook with the donation button. So, those are ways to support us, so that we can continue to support you and this community in which we live, um, and we love it. Uh, the only other announcement that I have, uh, I think is the Elder Board nominations. Uh, it is that time. I mentioned this last week. Uh, but Elder Board nomination time is here. Um, and so if you know some uh, if you know of someone who would be a great asset to landmarks leadership, someone who has good ideas for ministry, someone who has a heart for this community, uh, please swing by the church, grab a, a packet. Um, it's about three pages and the first two uh, are just really telling you exactly what qualifications we're looking for. Uh, kind of the job description, basically. And then the third page is the nomination form where you actually give us somebody's information. Um, and so if you come by the church, grab a packet, fill it out, and, and return it, uh, what we need to fill two spots on the Elder Board this year, and those terms will start in January. So uh, just keep that in mind. Pray for our, our church uh, as we have some leadership turnover. And that happens every year. Uh, two people come off every year. The, they're staggered. Uh, we have six people that serve on our elder board. Um, and so uh, 
it's not it's not like an unusual thing but it's just it happens every year that we need to fill spots so uh, please pray for us and keep that in mind uh, as 2021 will be an interesting time for our church leadership so uh, we'll see what that looks like so keep that in mind pray think about people who would make a good fit um, and as always if you have any prayer requests please type them in the comments or send a direct message uh, to us and we will get there uh, at the end i will i will look for them and round them up and pray together at the end so uh, without any further ado let's get into uh, our bible passage tonight we're going to be looking in mark the book of mark uh, chapter 8 verse 36 mark 8 36 now mark is a cool book it's very short uh, as far as gospels go uh, and mark is all about the action he uses lots of action words like immediately and uh, stuff like that so mark's writing style is very succinct very short if you want like the cliff notes version of jesus life uh, read mark it's cool but in mark chapter 8 verse 36 he says this, and this is from the New Living Translation. So if you're reading at home, it may sound a little different, but the point is the same. Uh, Mark 8, 36. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Again, that's Mark 8, 36. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Um, if you grew up in church, you've probably heard this before. It, it, it was a lot more popular in like the late 90s and, and early 2000s, I think. I don't, I don't hear it come about as often as I used to. But that's such a great question, right? What do you gain, really? Like, really, what do you benefit? What's your real gain? If you get everything this world has to offer, but you've lost your soul in the process, what's... Uh, who Did you really win? Did you really get anything? Was it really worth it? And so that's the question that we have for, for you tonight. Keep that in the back of your mind. But, but the, the question I want us to think about, the question I want us to focus on, is what do you really want out of this life? Right? The life that we live, we're, we're only here uh, for a short time. Uh, even if you live to be 100 in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's a blink of an eye. Scripture tells us that we're but a vapor. Right, we're here one day and gone the next, or we're like flowers in the field. Right, we spring up and then we're gone, uh, and that is so true in the perspective of uh, not of eternity for sure. But even if if we're not talking eternal perspectives, even just you know what's a hundred years in a span of of two thousand, three thousand, four thousand years, right? It's nothing. And so we're here for such a short time. The question is, what do you really want out of this life? What do you want out of the life that you've been given? The time that you are breathing, what do you what do you want to get out of it? And and maybe these are here's a couple of suggested answers to this question. Maybe some of these resonate with you. You can be honest because you're not talking to me, uh, right? So be honest with yourself. Um, what do you really want in this life? Do you want money? Right? Do you want to be rich? Uh, you have more money than anybody else, or, or maybe just enough money to be comfortable. Um, I, I, I know that um, when I was kind of a, a younger, a young man, like like in college, I, I kind of, I never wanted to, I mean, I guess if I'm, if I'm being completely honest, I've always wanted to be like super rich and just like have tons of money for doing absolutely nothing. I think that's the dream, right? Money for nothing. Um, but uh, really, uh, I kind of was like, you know what? I know that I've made it in life when I can buy chocolate milk all the time and it just lives in my, like, I just always have chocolate milk in my fridge, right? That's how I know you have arrived. And guess what? I'm not there yet because chocolate milk can get kind of expensive. And so we don't, and my kids are kind of addicted to it. So we don't get it all the time, right? But, but what do you want in life? Do you want money, right? Do you just want all the money you can get? Do you want, and all the stuff that it can buy? Do you want fame, right? Fame is uh, easier to attain now, uh, or maybe harder, depending on your perspective, with things like, like what we're doing right now with online videos and uh, Instagram influencers and YouTube people, you know, they're called YouTubers, right? People that just make videos for a living, right? Fame is easier to get than ever before, and it's uh, closer, uh, it's within reach for more of us than it ever has been. So is that something you want out of life? You want to be famous, 
Do you want relationships? Do you want to be well liked by everybody? Right? Do you just want to? Do you just want to be connected? Do you just want to know everybody? Right? Uh, and it's a similar vein, popularity. Right? Relationships are where you know everybody. Popularity is where everybody knows you. Kind of like fame. Right? Do you just want to be popular? Right? Do you want true love? Like if you just found true love in this life, that would be enough. Um, you know, maybe that's you. Maybe maybe you've had that and lost that. Maybe you're looking for that right now. Maybe you have it. Maybe you found it. And is that all that you want out of this life? True love. What about success? Whatever measurement success is for you. Certainly money and fame and popularity, those could all be forms of success. But maybe it's just being the best in your field, being the best at what you do. Right. Or just getting those promotions or climbing up the ladder. Is it success? Is that what you're really after? You just want to be successful in whatever you try. What about security? The older we get, the more we want security. And, and that comes in relationships, that comes in finances, that comes from uh, all kinds of other things. But do we want security? Right. Do we just want to know that we're taken care of, that we are protected from whatever? Right. Is that really what you want out of this life? Um, the best question of all, do you, what do you want out of this life? Do you want a relationship with Jesus? Right? For some people, that's no, it's not even on their radar. But it certainly doesn't sound like it's as good as some of those other things. But it's certain, it may, in fact, it's probably even better. But, here, but once you've got an answer to yourself, an honest answer of what it is exactly that you want out of this life, you have to ask yourself another question. In order to get that, Right. In order to get whatever it is that you really want, what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Right. Because the reality is we can't have our cake and eat it, too. If you want to be uh, famous. Right. Then there are things that have to be sacrificed in order to achieve that. If you want to be if you, if you want to make lots of money, there's things that have to be sacrificed in order to get to there. If you want success in business or in work things have to be sacrificed right uh, if you want true love there are other things that need to be sacrificed right and so what are you willing to give up are you willing to give up money for something else are you willing to give up fame or relationships for something else are you willing to give up popularity are you willing to sacrifice true love for money or fame or success are you willing to sacrifice success for true love? Maybe. Are you willing to sacrifice your relationship with Jesus to get something else? And I think, I don't think anybody who's a believer would say yes to that out loud. But the reality is people live that out every single day. They sacrifice their relationship for Jesus, with Jesus in order to get other things. And I'm not saying you need to be in church every single time the doors are open. It is good to take breaks. It is good to be with your family. It is good to take some time to do other things occasionally. Church should be a priority for sure, uh, but it shouldn't be number one on the list. That's God's position only. But uh, So I'm not saying just you should be at church all the time, although we would love that. When, when we're open again all the time. Um, so, but I'm talking about your real relationship with Jesus. I see so many people sacrificing that. They make a little compromise here or a little compromise there in order to get success or fame or money or maybe even true love. They're willing to sacrifice their relationship with Jesus Christ in order to get some of those other things because that's really what they want out of life. And if that's you, be honest with yourself. Maybe be honest with somebody else you can trust, somebody you can talk to. Just be honest and have that real conversation, right? But think about it, though. Uh, maybe you, you, I'm not saying you should have that conversation now, but you should certainly be honest with yourself. But hopefully I can convince you that nothing is worth sacrificing your relationship with Christ. Uh, I hope that's that's my point. That's my goal tonight is to convince you. I'm going to be very upfront about that. I want to convince you that nothing this world has to offer even comes close. All right. I want to at least get you thinking that way and for you to start looking into it for yourself. Right. And so uh, 
that's the question. Is there anything this world has to offer that's worth giving up your own soul, your, your relationship with Christ, your eternal uh, destination, or some people would say eternal security, right? Your, is, is it worth giving up your soul to get these things on earth? The culture in which we live, the world in which we live, uh, says there's lots of things worth pursuing at all costs, right? That means sacrificing everything else to get that thing. Professional athletes had to sacrifice a lot to get to where they are, right? And so there's lots of other things in, in our, our culture that say, look, these things are to be desired above all else. So if you have a chance, if you have a, a shot to get that thing, Put everything else aside and go after it, right? The culture says there's many things worth pursuing at all costs, but God disagrees. God says there's only one thing worth pursuing at all costs in his relationship with me, right? And so we have to be wise. If you've been here on Sunday morning, you know we've been talking about wisdom the last three Sundays. Um, so be wise. And if you have a pen or, or pencil or something to write with, or, or maybe you take notes on your phone, uh, this is a thing that you should write down or, or text to yourself or email to yourself. This is a thing you need to know. I didn't come up with this, but it's great. I highlighted it. I, I, I dotted it. Uh, right? <clears throat> this world will promise you anything, anything you want. This world will promise you anything in exchange for everything and leave you with nothing. Okay, I'm going to say that again, and then I will type it in the comments, okay? Uh, this world will promise you anything in exchange for everything and leave you with nothing, okay? Again, let me type it out. Uh, so if if you didn't get to write it down, uh, you can. This world will promise you, I don't type as nearly as fast as I talk or read anything in exchange for everything and leave you with nothing. There, I put that in the comments if you wanted to read that or look into that. But that's absolutely true. I've seen it happen time and time and time again, right? This world promises that you are literally promised the world. You can have anything you want. Just pursue it at all costs, right? And then you chase after that thing, and so often you don't get there, and you're left with nothing because you sacrificed everything to get this one thing and you don't get that, right? I've seen it happen so many times uh, with so many people in so many different uh, careers and, and life choices and so many different things. I've seen that play out. This world promises you, this world will promise you anything in exchange for everything and leave you with nothing. The amazing thing about a relationship with Jesus, though, is that it kind of works the opposite. Right now, well, we may think that we're asked to give up everything. And I certainly believe that when I was uh, growing up, when I was a kid, I did not was not raised in the church. I didn't really even go to church until I was uh, 13 or 14 years old. I uh, didn't really take it serious until I was 16 or 17, um, if you can call that serious. Um, but the, the, I've, I had that view of the church that and, and God that. You know, everything that I wanted to do was going to be bad or all the music that I liked was going to be uh, shunned or looked down upon. They're going to ask me to give it all up. The music I wanted, the, the way I preferred to spend my time, the things that I like to do. I just had in my mind that everything in my life was opposite of the church and opposite of God. And if I came to God, I'd have to give it all away. And I didn't want to do that. But that turns out to not be the case. Now, it may certainly, you may have to make some sacrifices. You will have to live a different lifestyle than everybody else. There are sacrifices involved, um, but that's true with pursuing anything worth pursuing. And so we may think we're asked to give up everything to have a relationship with Jesus. We may think that, 
from our earthly limited perspective, that if I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to have to give up everything I've ever known, everything I've ever thought that I wanted. I have to give it all away. And that may even be true. But the truth is that we receive everything that matters in return. We receive everything that matters, everything that makes a difference in the long run. Hold on to your soul and seek God's perspective on what is worth pursuing and what should just be abandoned because it will pass away. And that's true. The world in which we live is temporary. The lives in which we live are temporary. You know, we can chase after so many things and leave nothing or or just leave a legacy of chasing. And the things that really matter are found in Christ. God is eternal. Heaven is eternal. You can have your soul saved forever, you know. Uh, uh, that's an investment that lasts, is permanent, right? And so we have to ask ourselves that question. What do we really want out of this life? Well, do you want something that's going to pass away? Something that's, as soon as you pass away, it also comes to a close or it also comes to an end. And eventually, right, whatever it was that you put out into the world is is forgotten or gone or uh, it's just is no more or do you want to make an investment do you want to choose something in this life that lasts forever so hold on to your soul and seek god's perspective that's the real wisdom finding god's perspective on what it is we should really pursue so um if you have that writing utensil and some paper out, I would get a different piece of paper because that thing that you wrote down, um, you should keep that, put that somewhere front and center. Uh, but we're going to make a list. Uh, I know that some of you are love to make lists. Some of you are list people. Some of you are not. Uh, you prefer not to. But for this, just humor me. Uh, and if you, you know, I, I can't tell what you're doing. I hope that you would make a list. Uh, but if you don't, I don't know. So, but uh, get a piece of paper. You're actually going to make two lists, two, two lists. And you're going to create one list of things that can hurt your soul. One list is things that hurt your soul. It's like a pro con list, except for your soul, right? So, so write one list of things that hurt your soul and then create another list of things that nurture your soul, things that fill you up, things that, that empower you, things that, that, uh, recharge you right and then you have to make a choice every day which list are you going to choose which list are you going to choose and then share those lists with somebody maybe it's your spouse or a friend uh, share those and, and just say look these are the things that hurt my soul these are the things that that nurture and nourish and recharge my soul I'm going to try to choose these ones today. And then maybe ask that person to pray with you. Ask that other person to kind of help keep you accountable and say, look, are you nurturing your soul today? And maybe that sounds cheesy, but I promise uh, that it's effective, right? So, yeah, just share that list with somebody and ask them to help you make good choices for your soul. Um, that's the beauty of the church is us coming together to spur each other on towards good works, to, to help us be better, to help us do better, to care for each other, to lift each other up. Uh, and if you're not doing that, right, like if you're just kind of think of church as a place to go and sit down and hear somebody talk about the Bible and then go home, you're not even getting half of it, right? It's like having a Ferrari, but only doing, th only driving it through school zones, right? You're not getting the full effect of what the church is really for. Uh, so, and again, it's not a building, it's, it's the people and you don't have to be in the building to be doing church. It's about relationships and spurring each other on towards godliness. And so as we get ready to close today, um, we're going to pray a, a, a specific prayer on this topic. But before we get to that, I'm going to check through, uh, these comments. I see that we have a few, Megan, we're definitely going to be, uh, praying for, for Megan Vogus. Um, the Easterling family, we're going to pray for them. Um, we are also going to pray for the, um, 
for the Hodge family and, and, and all of Jordan Kiesecker's family. We're going to be praying for them. Um, and I got a bunch of prayer requests last week uh, that I wasn't quite able to share uh, because they were not uh, made public. But um, last week there was um, our, a former fire, or maybe the current, the fire chief's brother passed away uh, last week with um, a long battle with brain tumors. Uh, the, the Bailey family, um, and he was a fairly young guy with, with young children. Uh, so he leaves them behind to so pray for the Bailey family um, as well. So uh, with those in mind, let's pray and together then we'll end our time. God, thank you for today. God, we want to lift up these families today. We want to lift up Megan Bogus, God, that you would touch her life, that you would uh, show her the things that nurture her soul and the things that damage her soul and help her to choose uh, to be nurtured. God, we pray for the Easterville family, uh, Easterling family, excuse me, with the passing of Orville. We just ask that you would touch them, that you would hold them, that you would heal them. God, that you would make your presence known. God, at this time of loss, God, may they run to you for peace and comfort. God, we pray for the Bailey family, um, this uh, kind of sudden loss, we just ask that you would touch their lives, that you would, again, God, that you would be their source of hope and peace and comfort and security, God, that you would just guide them through this season of grief. And the same is true for all of Jordan uh, Kiesecker's family. God, we, we don't ever know what to do or what to say when a young person takes their own life, but God, we know that your heart hurts just as much as ours does. And so may this family turn to you. May they run toward you. May they not hide in their grief or, or uh, shrink away. But God, may they run towards you. God, you can handle the hard questions, the whys. Why did this happen? How did this happen? What should I have done differently? God, you can handle all of those questions. You are big enough to take it. So may this family run towards you instead of away. God, be there. May your presence be their peace. God, we also pray that you could make your wants our wants. God, that as we ask ourselves, what do we want most out of this life, that we could align our desires with yours. God, we, we want your plans to be our plans. We want the things of this world that look so good and so appealing. God, give us wisdom to see past all of those shiny packages and, and empty promises. God, it, it's tough sometimes for us to trust that your way is the best, especially with so many other options being thrown at us. So protect our souls, Lord. Guard our hearts. Protect our minds guard our souls. We cannot do this without your help. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Nancy, uh, pray for your unspoken request. Uh, Nancy, we had uh, some friends of yours here at church uh, this past couple weeks. They came and they were a lovely family. Uh, we miss you. Uh, happy to have you online tonight. We, I love you. I miss all of you. Um, if, if you feel comfortable, please come and join us on Sunday morning uh, at 11 o'clock. If not, if you don't feel safe or you don't feel comfortable or maybe you're just working, uh, whatever the case may be, you can find us here, Facebook, at 11 a.m. Sunday morning. Spread the gospel, not the coronavirus. See you guys later.